Now the final, well, before our closing remarks, the final speech is by a dear friend of mine. He's on our, my board of directors. I think I'll shortly be joining his. And he's done so much with a limited amount of Bitcoin to help end homelessness in Pensacola, Florida. But he really just was never satisfied with what he was doing in the immediate vicinity. Uh, he, w he wanted to do more. And so Jason King came up with an idea called Outposts Everywhere. And I believe it may be one of the most powerful tools to help end homelessness in the world today that I've ever encountered. So please give them a round of applause and be prepared to be amazed. So um, today what I'd like to talk about is I'd like to talk about innovation for social entrepreneurship, charities, and nonprofits within the Bitcoin space. Now, um, I run an organization called Sean's Outpost, and in the last 21 or so years, um, sorry, 21 or so years, in the last 21 or so months, um, we've fed 143,000 meals to the homeless using Bitcoin. <laughs> um, and even though we've only been doing this for a little less than two years, um, we're one of the larger and more recognizable um, charities and nonprofits in the Bitcoin space. Matter of fact, when we started doing it, if you were going to say um, Bitcoin and charity, you were really only talking about a, a handful of people, like five or six in the whole world. Uh, there was Bitcoin Not Bombs, uh, Free Aid, Antiwar.com, Bitcoin 100, and Sean's Outpost. Um, so those, you know, six or seven people were the whole worldwide contingent of, uh, of the nonprofit industry for Bitcoin. But last year, um, we started to see a lot more interest from the nonprofit sector. Today, if you want to donate to the United Way, which is the largest nonprofit charitable organization in the country, you can do so with Bitcoin. And they're not alone. You can donate to the American Red Cross, uh, Greenpeace, Khan Academy, and dozens of other charities. In 2014, uh, BitGive became the first Bitcoin-based organization to receive 501c3 tax-exempt status from the IRS. Uh, actually, um, uh, our esteemed MC, uh, Jeremy Gardner, is the executive director of the College Cryptocurrency Network. And as of yesterday, right? Yesterday? As of yesterday, the College Cryptocurrency Network became the second Bitcoin-based organization to receive 501c3 tax-exempt status. Right. So yeah, so now not only can you give them Bitcoin, but you can take a tax deduction for it. But so, so why the interest? Like, why is that valuable for a nonprofit or a charity to take Bitcoin? Well, so like one of the main reasons is, is that Bitcoin's a universal currency. For the first time ever really in human existence, anyone on the planet can send value to anyone else on the planet um, instantly with very low friction and at very low cost. And uh, I guess if Jeff Garzik and Elon Musk get their way, you'll be able to do that in space as well. <laughs> um, but uh, that's never really been possible. But why that's of value is if you think an organization like Sean's Outpost. So we're, we run a homeless organization, a homeless outreach in Florida. And Florida is one of the worst states in the country to be homeless. 37 miles north of here in Fort Lauderdale two months ago, 32 um, people were arrested just for the act of feeding homeless people. And that's, uh, that's what Sean's Outpost does every day. We've done it 143,000 times, and people were incarcerated for it. Uh, in Pensacola, where we operate, it's functionally illegal for you to be homeless. So if you start thinking about the socioeconomic and political reasons that would allow for the criminalization of homelessness like that, you can start to think that those same issues, the socioeconomic issues, will probably make it very difficult for you to fundraise for something like a homeless outreach. And so what Bitcoin's done is Bitcoin has made that not a problem for us. It's kind of even the playing field. Uh, so now, if we show you what we're doing, we show you the obstacles that we face, um, you, wh whoever you are, anywhere in the world, you can say, I think it's really screwed up that people are starving on the streets of, of Pensacola, Florida, and you can send money to me. And that's, that's never really been possible. If you think about it, um, before Bitcoin, it was impossible to send five dollars from the United States to Sierra Leone electronically. And you know, this, this remittance is like one of the largest problems with consumer finance a, as a whole. And uh, 
you know, to some place like Sierra Leone, you could send some more money, but then at that point in time, you would be subject to these usurious fees from companies like Western Union. And then Bitcoin does what Western Union does natively, and it does it for free. So, like, that's a huge value. And then one of the other main points that's valuable for nonprofits and charities today is that Bitcoin is significantly cheaper than, say, credit card processing. Credit card processing, sorry, credit card processors are going to charge you between 1.7 and 3.4 percent to process transactions just for the right to get that money. Um, so if you think about the 240,000 ish dollars that Sean's Outpost has raised, in 20 months we've saved 8,400 dollars at Sean's Outpost just by using Bitcoin instead of credit cards. Now, 8,400 dollars is a good amount of money, but to a nonprofit, it's a huge amount of money. And functionally, at Sean's Outpost, what that means is that we were able to feed an additional 6,720 meals to the homeless simply because we took Bitcoin instead of credit cards. Yeah, Bitcoin's awesome. Um, yeah, you guys are at a Bitcoin conference. That really shouldn't surprise you. Um, but so that's, those are the reasons, right? Those, those the three things, the sort of the uh, ease of transmission, global remittance, and low cost. Those are the reasons that, it, that Bitcoin has been interesting to the nonprofit and the charity sector so far. But in terms of Bitcoin as a technology, you know, that's a really, really basic function of Bitcoin. Um, you know, this is 2015. Uh, and in 2015, is the year that Marty McFly went to in the future and Back to the Future 2. And uh, in Back to the Future 2, I was promised uh, flying cars and uh, personal fusion reactors and jetpacks. And uh, really what I have right now is I have a smartphone and 140 character text messaging and flappy birds and Instagram filters. So like I feel a little bit shortchanged here. And I think that, um, that Bitcoin has so much more possibility that we haven't even realized yet. Um, in fact, I think that Bitcoin has the ability to fundamentally change how charities and nonprofits act. And, uh, you know, right now you see charities using Bitcoin as just a payment method. It's just a new payment method. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know, but there are traditional charities accepting Bitcoin to do traditional charitable works. And I think that Bitcoin, with a little creativity, can do so much more to revolutionize that idea. Um, so uh, I don't know what, uh, what Bitcoin's going to look like in 20 years. And I don't know what the effect that Bitcoin's going to have on uh, the nonprofit and charitable states is 20 years into the future. Just like in 1995, when we were all logging into Prodigy and AOL, um, we didn't see Uber or Twitter or Instagram or things like that. So no matter what wonderful things you saw this weekend, we're still really all at the beginning stages of Bitcoin, and we can't even know what it's going to look like 20 years down the line. So I can't really talk about what it's going to look like 20 years down the line for the charity and nonprofit space, but what I can talk about is sort of this, um, this hope and this possibility that Bitcoin opens up that we haven't seen yet, but it does have the possibility for it. And I can talk about what excites me and what excites the people at Sean's Outpost about using this technology. So I'm a homeless advocate. And what that means is, is that I care a whole lot about the rising homeless epidemic in the United States. Now, I mean, I care about everybody, but like, I live in the United States and it's a huge problem here where I live. Excuse me. In 2014, the National Law Center on Homelessness and Poverty estimated there were 1.75 million homeless in the United States. Now that's up from 1.6 million in 2013. So that's 1 million 750,000 homeless people in the United States, up 150,000 people just from 2013. If you think about that, that is the entire state of Wyoming and the entire state of New Hampshire homeless. And the city of Riverside, California went homeless just between 2013 and 2014. So it really is an epidemic. And if you take the number, if you take 1.75 million, and you multiply that by three meals a day, and then you multiply that by 365 days a year, what you're gonna come up with is 1.91 billion meals needed just to feed the homeless in this country, supposedly the most free, most prosperous country on earth. And so, if you remember what I said, Sean's outpost in the last 20 months 
has only fed 143,000 meals. And that's weird to say, only fed 143,000 meals, because we're really proud of that fact. But you can see that Sean's Outpost would have a difficult time scaling to 1.91 billion meals, which is the goal that we all need to reach. So how are we going to do that? You know, how do we get to that level? And I think this is where we come into where we have to be more creative. So what if we throw everything out? What if we throw everything that we know about feeding the homeless out? And what if we start with something fresh? What if, what if you had a smartphone application? And that smartphone app was essentially two buttons. And one of those buttons said, give a meal. And one of those buttons said, get a meal. And if you were homeless and hungry and you pressed get a meal, a map would come up and it would show you all of the homeless organizations in your area that were feeding. But it wouldn't just show you that. It would also show you the locations of all the people that had pressed give a meal. And so when you've got four extra spaghetti dinners because you cooked too much, you press give a meal, and now that gets pinged out to all of the hungry people in your area. So 1.91 billion, it's an astronomical number. And when you think about it, it's, it's almost like, why bother? We're never going to get past this. But if you think about it in a different way, if you think about the total number of adults in the United States, and you divide that into 1.91 billion, we're really only talking about each of us feeding eight meals to a homeless person over the course of a year to completely eradicate homeless hunger in the United States. So that's a powerful idea. I think that that's a really, really good revolutionary idea, and I, I would like to see that happen. But, um, but what does that have to do with Bitcoin, <laughs> right? I mean, it is distributed technology, and Bitcoin is distributed technology, and we have learned the empowerment that distributed technology can get, not just Bitcoin, Tor, BitTorrent, you know, wireless mesh, open mesh, like those things are great. Um, but how can we apply Bitcoin to this? Well, truthfully, Bitcoin supercharges this idea. Um, one of the oldest memes um, on the internet uh, in terms of Bitcoin is like a picture of a homeless guy holding up a QR code. It's like, will work for Bitcoin. And so you guys have all seen variations of that. And it's funny. And um, actually, over you know, two years of running Sean's Outpost, I've probably received you know, dozens of emails of like, hey, I got this great idea. Why don't you just issue all of the homeless giant QR codes, and then they can do digital panhandling on the side of the road? <laughs> and, uh, and it is a cool idea, right? But um, I have a hard enough time getting a QR code to register when the QR code's right in front of my face. <laughs> like, I couldn't imagine driving and trying to get a QR code, you know, like the traffic accidents that would cause. Um, but there's something to that idea, and I think if we stick with the spirit of it, um, imagine if uh, when you were driving down the road and you saw a homeless person, or you're walking down the street and you saw a homeless person, you wanted to feed that person, right? But for some reason, you didn't want to do it. It doesn't matter what the reason is. It could be, you know, that, like, you just didn't know how to start, or you were... You had issues about concerns about, you know, approaching a homeless person, or maybe you just live in your life and, like, you can't really deal with that, but you still wanted to get that guy fed. Well, imagine if now you could go to this application and you could, uh, you could issue a bounty on feeding that person, right? Like you put a small bounty out. And now once you've done that into the application, that broadcasts out. Anybody that wants to can compete with each other to be the first person to go feed that homeless guy, right? And then what if the bounties were multi-sig? Okay, and then so as you as the person that's going to try to collect the bounty, you get part of the key, and the person who issued the bounty gets part of the key, and the application provider gets part of the key, and now you, to collect this bounty, have to provide social proof in the form of like, what, a video or a picture that shows that you have met these requirements, and you have to convince two of three of the key holders that you've crossed that threshold to get that bounty to feed that homeless person. And this is a powerful idea, guys. It is. It's not perfect. You know, some people will feed zero meals, but some people will feed 143,000. And, you know, we can take this insurmountable pro problem um, and we can break it into a million different pieces and then we become millions of ants that devour an elephant. Um, my eight-year-old daughter, Midgey, uh, is a type one diabetic. And um, watching her deal with that, I mean, she is, she's the strongest person I've ever met in my life. But it's hard to watch 
because she's a child and she has to deal with this disease that there is no cure for, and she just has to deal with it. But my eight-year-old daughter knows what the cure for hunger is. And all of you in this room know what the cure for hunger is. And we have the technology, the will, and the ability in leveraging technologies like Bitcoin and this new app that I'm describing called Outpost Everywhere can really, can really help us solve homeless hunger in this country and not in 20 years, but right now. So we had hoped to have a prototype of this done for this conference, because this is a great conference. Mo, thank you so much, man. Have you guys had a good time? Yeah? Um, I have to give some shout outs on it. Um, if you guys are familiar with uh, Push for Pizza, um, their CTO and founder, um, Will Hawk, has been instrumental in sort of leading our dev team for the, uh, the development of Outposts everywhere. And then um, let's see, Whitey Cracker, or AKA Bryce Case, um, has been really, uh, has thrown into Satoshi, Stephen Dack from CryptoKit. Um, but all of these people, you know, this idea, um, it really does have power, and it really does have the ability for all of us to sort of collectively spread the load and take this problem that affects everyone, affects all of us, and actually do something about it right here, right now. Thanks.